I think it's a real privilege to have the job that I've got. And I want people to want to work for the NHS. And I want people to want to work in Birmingham and Solihull. Hall. This is a fantastic place. Most of my career's been in this area. And I want people to say, this is the place I want to work in the NHS. As a system, we had a significant shock. We had a number of colleagues throughout the system, but particularly at uh, University Hospitals Birmingham, who raised concerns. As a set of chief executives, we recognise there was an issue not just at University Hospitals Birmingham, but more generally across the NHS. And we wanted to reach out to staff to understand what their issues were and how we might address those issues. We want to make Birmingham and Solihull the best place to work, not only just for health staff, but care staff as well. What struck me is when I've talked to staff, and these are staff who provide frontline services, is their frustration if they want to develop their career in another organisation, another trust, another provider in the system. And the level of bureaucracy in doing that is quite difficult and we want to have a more frictionless approach to that, almost like a passport within the health and care system locally to cut through that bureaucracy. So yes, you still have to have an interview, but all the things post-interview that you have to do is much simpler to do. Some of the checks, for example, that, that, that all our frontline staff have to do are often done two or three times. You could have done it six months ago in one trust get a new job and have to do it again. So this will be better for not only for the staff, but for the organisations, because it means that they're not waiting uh, and having those delays in recruiting staff in some key positions. It might be midwives, you know, it might be people on an intensive care unit, it might be porters, you know, it's, it might be administration staff. All, all are incredibly important, so it helps more. But at the end of the day, the person that helps more than anything else are patients. And um, if our staff are happy, if we get the right staff in the right place, it, it helps patient care and outcomes. So there are a number of reasons why this is different for staff. Firstly, we are using a technology platform that's used elsewhere in the private sector, and it's a tested platform. It's anonymous. Um, it's very easy to access through any device, device at work or your device at home. So it is important that if staff are investing their time and effort uh, and their intellectual capacity into actually putting ideas forward that we a consider those ideas and b we actually then look at them feedback but importantly ensure we've got a clear plan and what we will commit to is once we've done the conversation we will have a clear plan that we will publish that we will feedback to all staff to uh, each organization um, and more generally across the system I hope some changes can be made in months. So um, there's a real intent amongst the leadership community that we need to show a difference quickly. But I think we have to be pragmatic and realistic. Culture is not changed overnight and some of these are long-held issues within the NHS both locally and actually nationally and it's going to take us time to do that. The gravity of some of the issues that we are facing in terms of burnout of staff um, after Covid has still not gone away after the impact of the strikes that we've had and you know everybody's felt that are going to take some time to work it, work their way through so we have to be pragmatic about that and I know colleagues are working very very hard on engaging staff in each individual organisation about culture.